Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your lovely family. I miss them. And happy Thanksgiving to Horse Center World. Well said, Matt. I appreciate that. And, and the same to you. Unfortunately, I'm a little under the weather, folks, so I apologize if I'm not sounding my usual chipper self. But hey, the show must go on, Matt. And we're talking about a big holiday racing uh, bonanza at Churchill Downs this weekend, Thanksgiving weekend. We're going to focus on two biggies, uh, a pair of grade two $400,000 races, one Friday, one Saturday. Without further ado, if you're ready, let's jump into the Clark on yeah, Friday. Yeah, let's do it. All right. The Clark is a field of 10, Matt, and uh, this has been a race that's uh, decided some Eclipse Awards over the year. I don't, I don't think that will be true. In fact, I know that won't be true here this year. But uh, interesting betting race in that you have a bunch of older horses who might be, uh, might be developing into nice horses. And then you got a couple of three-year-olds who... Won uh, stakes races and might be looking to bust out with their biggest win yet. So let's start from the rail, Matt. And uh, one of two New York Reds in the field is Straight Arrow. Straight Arrow is a horse you're probably familiar with at, out in uh, out in the East Coast, Matt. And he is uh, son of Arrogate is looking better and better of lately. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, trained by Mike Dinney. I guess I was a little surprised to see him in this field. I, I would maybe more have expected him to go in the upcoming uh, Cigar Mile, but uh, but we shall see. Uh, a New York bred, as you mentioned, really a breakout race uh, last time when he became a stakes winner in the Empire Classic, which is one of the big... Uh, uh, races for uh, the New York breads, males going a distance. Yeah, he's been a consistent horse, but he really looks to be on the improve. In fact, his last two, uh, the allowance race before the Empire Classic was quite impressive. Both of those races came on the mu uh, came on muddy tracks. That, uh, the last time the Empire Classic was nine furlongs, and he looked good doing it. Maybe they want the nine furlongs of the Clark here on Saturday, but an interesting horse, as is, of course, First Mission. I think First Mission will be the favorite. You see the morning line from Churchill Downs has him at three to one. I could even see him a little bit lower. We're talking Godolphin, we're talking Brad Cox, and we're talking a very lightly raised, potentially, uh, a potential star on the horizon. Yeah, I agree with that assessment, Brian, the winner of his last three races. If you go back, uh, if you turn the calendar back, a bunch of months three in a row uh, um he won the lexington grade three race uh last stop on the kentucky derby trail uh brian but did not run the derby and actually was off after that for about six months uh and th so that was a, a a very impressive victory but i also liked his race when he came back uh last month in an allowance race um, and overcame a little bit of trouble to get the victory. Yeah, absolutely, Matt. That was his first race in six months. You remember that he was going to be one of the favorites for the Preakness before uh, being scratched out of the Preakness off his uh, uh, Lexington Stakes win, as you said, which was only his third start. Uh, Blue Blood, Go Dolphin, uh, uh, Son of Street Sense for Brad Cox. And six months off. He definitely overcame trouble last time as a heavy favorite in an allowance race. Now he looks to prove that he is a horse uh, to really look out for in 2024 in the Clark here. The other three-year-old in the field, Matt, is another interesting one. Il Miracola, trained by Antonio Sano, has run in a lot of races this year, a lot of stakes races. Frankly, he wasn't quite up to snuff earlier this year in some big ones down in Florida for Sano. But uh, the uh, son of Gunrunner, as Gunrunners sometimes do, he, he's, he's improved with experience and age. And uh, he is uh, coming in, I think, off of four straight very solid stakes appearances. 
Yeah, no doubt, uh, Brian, uh, this horse, you mentioned uh, his experience for a three-year-old these days. Um, it's got done a lot of <laughs> racing, and when you stack him up to this field, he is one of the most experienced horses uh, in the field, and, and I agree, is in very good form, uh, as good a form as he has been in uh, throughout his career last time. He was second uh, in in the Fayette, third in a very good field in the uh, Pennsylvania Derby, and before that was a winner of the Smarty Jones. Smarty Jones at Parks, which is a main prep for that Pennsylvania Derby. Yeah, he's a, he's a tactical horse. He's been running against good horses all year, ever since the Belmont. I think he's been good, and that Fayette where he was – Part of a, a scrum there at the wire uh, was another solid performance. That one against older horses for the first time, and Il Miracola seems to fit in here. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's higher than the four to one we see on the morning line there. Another horse of, of interest for sure, Matt, is the four gasoline. Gasoline, which I think is a terrible name for a racehorse, but that's completely besides the point. Uh, trained by Todd Fletcher, I was talking about those lightly raced older horses who might be uh, developing. I, gasoline, I guess, isn't that lightly raced, but he seems to be developing. A son of Curlin, a four-year-old trained by Todd Fletcher, uh, after a layoff, he's come back with two wins over the track at Churchill Downs. Yeah, two nice allowance wins at Churchill Downs, and uh, certainly must be a reason why they are going to make the, put this horse in his first stakes race because of, you know, of the fact that he has done so well at Churchill Downs. Yeah, it, it, done well at Churchill Downs, and those are the only two races off a layoff. And uh, again, uh, it looks like he's getting good at the right time for this Clark, that is. And that last win, uh, a really nice allowance win, which makes me think if he can repeat that, he's got a real shot in here. By the way, Matt, I, I would think that he might be the second choice over Il Miracola in, in the Clark on uh, Friday. Number five is Trademark. Trademark throws in some good races. He's three of five at Churchill. Uh, in fact, two starts ago, he was very good in the Lucas Classic and they're all lost. But last time he really did nothing in the Fayette. Yeah, uh, for Vicky Oliver, who, you know, has a way of winning some big races uh, now and now and then. Going back to that Lucas, uh, where he had the lead in the stretch and just lost narrowly by a head, uh, you can certainly make him a contender. But then that most recent seventh in uh, in the Fayette, maybe not so much. Yeah, the Fayette was a poor performance for him. And uh, you got to wonder if uh, he can bounce back to that good race. He ran two starts back in the Lucas Classic. Another New York Red film star. Uh, film stars run a lot of good races recently for trainer Linda Rice. In fact, two starts back, he was second in the Woodward. Last time he was a little disappointing, but uh, the speed figures on that fourth, where it wasn't beaten all that much, came back pretty good. Yeah, another one that's uh, that's that's in good form. I guess he could be sharing the the van with uh, a straight arrow to come down for this race. Uh, before that, finishing second in the Woodward, that was a second behind uh, behind Zandon, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, he had two allowance wins. So Linda Rice, you know, is as good at anybody as getting the best out of a horse and keeping them in good form. Yeah, Filmstar is going well right now. Filmstar has some good tactical speed. Might be a good uh, segue into uh, taking a look at the Timeform U.S. pace projector for this race, Matt. And uh, they are uh, they are saying a fast pace for this nine furlong Clark, two turns at Churchill Downs. And the horse that they think will be on the lead is the seven Giant Game. Giant Game was beaten pretty good last time by Gasoline. Uh, in an allowance race, he was second that day. But Giant Game has some nice performances this year, and uh, he might be the speed of the speed in what looks to be a pretty contentious early pace. Yeah, and and as you can see on the pace projector, <clears throat> they show uh, Giant Game having a chance to get loose on the lead. And anytime that happens, that's good for that's good for a horse. But you do have to go back a ways to find a win for uh, Giant Game. Back to the Corn Husker, one of your favorite races, Brian, which is a Grade Three. And and and, and as a summary of this field, uh, no horse in this field uh, has done better than a Grade Three victory. 
Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's it's part of the reason why it's a wide open race, Matt. There's there's no proven top older horses here. We got three year olds trying to step up, and older horses that who might be developing. As I said, Giant Game. Uh, yeah, I, he he's the one that's on the lead there, clearly on the lead there. But there are a lot of good horses who like to be pretty close, including the favorite First Mission, not far behind the two there on the time form us pace projector one horse that will be nowhere near the early lead is happy american not the eight happy american you know last uh winter he got pretty good he got on a pretty good run i i don't know if this is the time of year where happy american can all of a sudden show up uh there were some decent races this year races where you think he would have a good shot that fast pace could help him here uh lately though there's been more rather dull performances including last time for happy american yeah and you were mentioning uh his uh, uh when he was in good form he was a grade three winner of the louisiana at fairgrounds but that was all the way back in uh january good couple of good third place finishes in the stephen foster and the ben ally but yeah he, he leaves himself so much work to do brian he's so pace dependent and and uh uh Everything's got to go perfectly for him to get a win. But I guess, you know, uh, he's probably going to be a good price. And, and if he comes running enough, he could get into the trifecta. Yeah, I, I agree with that, Matt. And, and it's probably the highest odds in the field, uh, Happy American might be a horse to consider if you're uh, playing those wagers, uh, superfectus and trifectus, because Happy American. Uh, when he does run his race, and, and maybe this time of year is to his liking, when the weather starts to get a little colder, Happy American is a horse who could pop up and come running down the stretch. Another horse who could pop up is Stage Raider. Brian Hernandez Jr. will ride for uh, trainer Sherry DeVoe. And, and Stage Raider was going good until he went out last time to Santa Anita in the Breeders' Cup Turf Mile. Yeah, he was doing well, Brian. Uh, was second in the ACAC. He had a winner. Uh, in uh, st in a listed stakes race at Ellis Park. I think both of those performances uh, encouraged DeVoe to send uh, Stage Raider to uh, the Breeders' Cup for the Dirt Mile. But boy, he didn't do much running at all in that small field, basically at the back of the field uh, the entire way. Maybe he didn't like the shipping uh, across the country. Uh, we'll see if he can bounce back. If he can... Uh, he's a threat. Yeah, if he can, I, I would I would justify that he's got a shot in here, Matt. I'd say justify, of course, because he's justifies half brother, stage raider, uh, two good races before he went out west, as we said, one of them coming to Churchill Downs, two starts back behind Zozos in the Ack Ack. Number 10 is Blue Devil, uh, yet another horse who I can't completely throw out, Matt. If you look at his form, it might come against a little bit cheaper, but not a not a whole lot cheaper and he's run a lot of good competitive races and he's run uh, well at Churchill Downs before. Yeah. And, and certainly uh, to make him interesting in this field, when he moved from turf to dirt, uh, um, he's gotten on a little run here uh, with a couple of allowance wins and then, and a third in the Luce, Lucas classic, excuse me uh, um, on the dirt. I, he maybe has found a better surface. Yeah, and that third in the Lucas Classic, uh, you know, this same distance at Churchill Downs, he was not beaten by a lot. So Blue Devil, uh, picking up Javier Castellano, uh, yeah. the Derby and Belmont Stakes winner of this year uh, as his rider. So uh, interesting field of 10. Again, no superstars, no Eclipse Award horses, but uh, we'll see if First Mission can uh, jump up and uh, stake his claim as one of the horses to really watch in 2024. Or maybe uh, maybe he's not the real deal, and this wide open Clark Field will uh, get him beat as the favorite. We'll see. Uh, the day after is a big race, a big uh, day for two year olds. They have four stakes uh, for two year olds: two for Colts, two for Phillies on Saturday at Churchill Downs. The biggest is the Kentucky Jockey Club. By the way, the Goldenrod, which is the female counterpart of the Kentucky Jockey Club. Uh, is a very nice field too, so check that out. But we're going to focus on the males here, Matt. And again, this is a field where I think you can make a, point, a, a case for a lot of different horses. The one scares me, frankly, Awesome Road. Uh, 
All Ball Stables is a, a son of quality road for trainer Brad Cox. Really nice looking winner at uh, Ellis Park in his debut. Uh, last time, though, disappointing when uh, seventh in the Breeders' Futurity, the grade one Breeders' Futurity. Yeah, and again, those connections of, uh, of Brad Cox and Flavian Pratt, you know, that means that the horse will probably probably be a little bit of a lower price than you than he deserves to be. I checked again this morning, Brian, and the morning line was not out yet for uh, – the uh, Kentucky Jockey Club, uh, but you'll you'll give us our your insights on, on how you think the line's going to work. But yeah, uh, showed some promise. But boy, that Breeders' Futurity was was not particularly good. So um, and on the rail here as a two year old. Right. Uh, yeah, we, we we don't have the morning line odds yet for the Kentucky Jockey Club. I'm projecting that Risk It, the number seven, will be favored over the number one awesome road and the number six stretch ride as the two closest to risk it in the odds uh, we'll we'll see how that pans out but awesome road i think you're right i think he will get some play and he's one of those horses you know who can bounce back after a bad performance in a second lifetime start uh first try uh going longer last time in the previous futurity which the top two horses matt we like a lot in locked and the wine steward. So it'll be interesting to see how awesome road bounces back. Honor Marie is a live long shot in my eyes, and I, I think he will be a long shot. Uh, Honor Marie is a rallier, uh, rallying son of Honor Code, who got up to win a six furlong maiden race at uh, Churchill Downs, and then last time got up for second in a sloppy allowance race at seven furlongs. Stretches out here a mile and a 16th. Uh, steps up in class a little bit, but Honor Marie is a horse I would not throw out, especially if you're looking for exotics. Yeah, a couple of races where uh, uh, obviously, you know, uh, a win that was, that made the special, special weight was in a restricted uh, type of maiden race, uh, and then second in an allowance, an honor code. Um, so, yeah, uh, uh, you can't completely disregard this one. Right. You can't completely disregard the number three as well, Matt. Real Men Violin, a son of Mendelssohn. Interesting name here, Real Men Violin. There's Brian Hernandez Jr. again. And this is a Kenny McPeak trained runner who's run in nothing but maidens in his first five races. However, yeah, it, take, it took him five races to break that maiden, but he, he's run pretty well in all five races, and he finally broke through with a win last time. Yeah, you know, the kind of thing that you come to expect from Kenny McPeak, uh, you know, when they're ready and, and they're healthy, he will run them. And as you mentioned, the five maiden starts to get the win. He did finish in the top three in all five of those races. Yeah, yeah. He, he was competitive every time out. And maybe that uh, move from maiden race to a grade two here will not be as huge a jump as it sometimes could be from a maiden race to a grade two. Uh, Matt, let's take a look now at the time form U.S. pace projector for this one. Uh, we're not projecting a fast pace, or I'm sorry, time form U.S. is not projecting a particularly fast pace in here. But you see maybe the favorites uh, as the horses who uh, are most likely to be out there. Uh, number seven, as I said, I think will be favorite risk it. There's the six stretch ride. We haven't talked about either of them yet. Awesome road, the one. Uh, after that, you got some rallyers, and that includes horses we've talked about already, uh, already there. Honor Marie, the two. Real Men Violin, the three. And Dancing Groom, the number four. Dancing Groom is a son of Vino Rosso. Antonio Sano bringing a couple horses to these big races at Churchill Downs. And uh, Sano is bringing Dancing Groom. He's another horse who uh, I'm not exactly sure what to make of him, but I certainly can't throw him out here. Yeah, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, Dancing Groom, I think, gives Sano a legitimate chance to win both of our featured races on the show uh, this week. You mentioned Castellano earlier. He gets a rider uh, change to Castellano in here. Vino Rosso is having a fantastic year um, as a first-year sire, and, and this being one of many who are doing well, broke his maiden at Saratoga. And then we saw Dancing Groom finish third in the Champagne. And we've talked about the Champagne a number of times on the show in the last uh, few weeks. Uh, um, I don't know if most people would call it a key race, but a lot of horses have come out of that 
champagne that grade one on the sloppy track uh, at Aqueduct and run really well. Yeah, we, we know the winner, Timberlake, is a good horse. And he, he of course, competed in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. I will say that uh, this horse, uh, Dancing uh, Dancing Groom, was uh, well beaten a third. He was beaten by just over 10 lengths in the Champagne. But again, maybe not a bad performance on that sloppy track. Before that, he won a maiden race in his second start easily at Saratoga, but it wasn't particularly fast. So I, I, uh, I'm i struggling to, to figure out how dangerous Dancing Groom is in this field. But uh, yeah, Santos got two live horses, it would look like in Il Miracola in the Clark and Dancing Groom in the Kentucky Jockey Club. Another horse uh, who's a little bit hard to figure here is Nomos. Nomos comes from the barn of Todd Pletcher. Nomos has started three times. Uh, he's uh, bred and owned uh, by uh, 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 owners who like to specialize in the turf. And this son of Uncle Mo has specialized in, in, on the turf so far in his career, but now he switches to dirt. Yeah, Brian, uh, uh, you said it. Uh, hard to know what to figure with this horse because uh, uh, trained by Todd Pletcher, uh, this is a little bit of an unusual move. <coughs> uh, you know, when he makes all of his starts on the turf and now they're going to, to switch him to the dirt in a grade three, a little bit unusual. Um, he's got broke his maiden at Monmouth, ran in a stakes race, a couple stakes races already, with a fourth in the with anticipation, but then a 12th in the bourbon. So the, the turf to dirt angle and the, you know, the, the wide range of uh, finishes in his races, uh, he has another one that can't throw out, but is a little hard to figure. Yeah, the, some of the positives there is that he's definitely bred for dirt, and he's run against good horses. He was a nice winner of his debut performance. So we'll see. Almost uh, a, a potential uh, good thing switching to dirt here, but it, it, it's hard to know. And he didn't do particularly well, as you mentioned, in those two graded stake starts on the grass. Number six, the only undefeated horse in the race, Matt, is uh, Stretch Ride. Stretch Ride is a son of Street Sense, much like the favorite in the Clark. Street Sense, of course, a Kentucky Derby and a Breeders' Cup Juvenile winner at Churchill Downs. Uh, Stretch Ride, two for two for trainer Dale Romans. I, and I imagine if you asked, I, I haven't, but if you asked Dale Romans, he would tell you that he likes this horse a lot, Matt, coming off those two nice wins, one sprinting, one going two turns, one at Churchill, one at Caneland. Yeah, and what's not to like, as you mentioned, Brian, two for two, uh, Dale Romans, uh, the maiden special weight, and then a really visually impressive victory in an allowance at Keeneland where he won by almost six lengths. Yeah, and, and the fact that he's got a win over the track where he uh, gutted it out and got up in a six furlong debut maiden race at Churchill's a nice thing, but then I think he actually beat some decent horses in yeah. that Keeneland allowance race. And he did it very easily. So stretch ride uh, looking good uh, through two races of his career as he steps up the stakes company. But it might, again, he might be another one where the jump up to this grade two level is not as much as it sometimes is. And stretch ride, very interesting horse here uh, for trainer Dale Romans in the uh, Kentucky Jockey Club. Number seven is the horse that we figure will be the favorite. Tyler Gaffleon will be up again on Risk It. Risk it, a son of Gunrunner. Gunrunner's not really slowing down as a top young sire. And this one comes from us from the barn of Steve Asmussen. Yep, and we've got those Gunrunner connections also. Not just the Gunrunner being the sire, but Asmussen, the trainer. Winchell uh, uh, family are the owners. Got T Tyler Gaffleone up in the saddle. Uh, um, yeah, he was <laughs> in his debut at Saratoga and then ran second in the Iroquois uh, a little bit earlier this year. Yeah, it, 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 past performances are somewhat similar to Stretch Ride, and they both only had two races. They both uh, won sprinting first time out. Riskett did it nicely at Saratoga, as you say. Uh, and then he came out for the Iroquois, ran a very good race uh, between some other good horses, uh, West Saratoga and uh, uh, Liberty, uh, oh, what's the horse's name? Liberal Arts, who was third in that Iroquois. Uh, risk it a good second in the Iroquois. You figure he would move up a little bit in his second try against Graded Stakes Company. Probably a deserving horse and a horse you simply can't 
throw out of the uh, your exotics here in the Kentucky Jockey Club. Finally, Matt, by the way, Risket was the only horse we had in our top 12 of our uh, Kentucky Derby show that we did last week, our early first look at the Kentucky Derby 2024. So maybe another feather in the cap of Risket. Number eight is the one horse out of 18 that we've talked about now, Matt, where I really feel like he would be a surprise. One red cent, uh, one of seven lifetime win came in Baden claiming. The only thing you could say about one red cent is he appears to be getting better in his last couple starts. Yeah, uh, and, uh, you know, I think a couple of those most recent starts were in maiden claimers. Um, he broke his maiden in one of them, be it in a very high price a maiden claimer with a $100,000 tag. Yeah, one red cent looks like a no uh, a, a no play for me in this Kentucky Jockey Club, frankly. Uh, I guess we start, uh, I guess we move right into our top picks now, Matt. Uh, again, a big holiday weekend, good races, uh, coast to coast. Churchill Downs, though, is where we centered our show, the Clark and the Kentucky Jockey Club, the males. Let's get to our top picks. I'm going to let you go first, and would you start with the Clark for me, sir? Absolutely. Uh, um, yeah, it was, it was a tough race to make a pick for me. I think in the end it came down to a decision between uh, Stage Raider and the horse that I am making my top pick in first mission. I was very impressed with uh, first mission uh, from that victory in the Lexington, and and I didn't find any reason to feel that this might be the the most talented horse in the field after that allowance win uh, in October. Yeah, he didn't win by much off the layoff, uh, and he was heavily favored. Uh, but he certainly came over, overcame a bad trip there. First mission could be any kind. Still only four races. This will be the acid test. I, I'm I'm slightly against him as the chalk, but I do recognize him as the most likely winner of the Clark. I went uh, with a horse with a little bit more odds, and I went with a three-year-old. I just really think Aramil Kala has moved up to become a solid graded stakes horse. You saw it. At Saratoga in the Curlin Stakes, you saw it in the Smarty Jones win at Parks, uh, third in the Pennsylvania Derby, the Million Dollar Pennsylvania Derby, and a really good effort last time in his first try against older stakes horses. Uh, so uh, tactical, race with some speed. He can come from a little farther back, but if, if, if there is less speed, he can be uh, pretty close to the pace. No Miracola for me, and I think he will be higher than those four to one morning line odds. The Kentucky Jockey Club, Matt, I see we went the same way, and we're thinking that Stretch Ride might still be unbeaten after his stakes debut. Yeah, we don't agree that often. And in here, obviously, I was making a decision between Stretch Ride and Risk It, who uh, I put in our, uh, our our first Kentucky Derby contender. Uh, uh, list that doesn't mean that i don't like risk it i think risk it being a gun runner has got plenty of potential down the road but right now i like the form of stretch ride with that two for two and the nice uh, allowance win at keeneland yeah absolutely there, there there are a bunch of dangerous horses horses who could pop up in here but it, it really came down to stretch ride and risk it for me as well i think both of these horses are horses we could be talking about uh, come the first Saturday in May next year. They're both bred to stretch, to 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 run longer. And I went with Stretch Ride as well. Like I said, almost similar past performances, and they both only made two starts. I think Risk It will be preferred on the odds board here. But Stretch Ride uh, coming off that really nice win at Caneland was enough for me to make him the top pick, uh, probably the second choice in the Kentucky Jockey Club. All right, Matt, that's our Thanksgiving, our holiday show. Uh, before we go, though, we always got to get a good parting shot from you, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Thanksgiving marks, you know, the end of the racing year coming up. But it also says there's a lot of big races left and there's a lot of big races uh, this weekend. So uh, after you uh, enjoy your turkey dinner and you have a day to recover, there's not much racing on Thanksgiving itself, but plenty on Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, absolutely. Big races this weekend uh, for you to enjoy. Also, next weekend, we'll be talking about uh, a really nice uh, card of racing at Aqueduct uh, on a week from Saturday. So 
lot to look forward here on the racing front. Also, uh, I join Matt in wanting to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, as always, for watching. Turn on those notifications, subscribe to our channel. But most of all, Matt and I appreciate you. Um, Thanksgiving is a time to remember what you're thankful for. So however much or little that is, uh, think about that a little bit. I'm thankful for so much, including my partner out there in New Jersey who has been uh, putting up with me for about 10 years now in Horse Center. Uh, having said that, we'll be back next week Next week with a big uh, uh, card from Aqueduct. We'll see you then. Until then, happy holiday.